I use YouTube for research on various topics from car buying tips to cooking recipes. Now it would be really helpful if I can get notes for those videos. Well, that is exactly what we're doing today. I want to show you that with just a bit of Python code, we can generate high quality notes from YouTube videos and save them to a factor database for future reference. Okay, I am in Visual Studio Code. I have my notebook open. First thing we need to do is install the packages that we need. The first one is YouTube Transcript API. We need this to extract transcripts from the YouTube video. The next one that we need is the Google Gemini large language model. We need to use the large language model to convert the ugly transcripts into nice and neat notes. The reason I'm using Gemini is because there is a free tier. Once we have the notes, we are going to save it into the ChromaDB factor database. Go ahead and execute this. I already have these installed, so I'm going to move on to the next section. After we have everything installed, we're going to import the modules that we need. So for Gemini, uh, at the time of recording, there is a free tier. I don't know when you're watching this, so make sure you go here. There's a few models to choose from. 1.5 Pro is their most powerful one. Take a look at the limitation down here. Two requests per minute. So after two requests within the same minute, it's going to error out. I don't think two is enough for us. I think 1.5 Flash with 15 requests per minute. That's about one request every four seconds. So that's good enough for uh, our purpose. Okay, now let's set up our resources. The first thing we need is the Gemini API key, which I have saved in my environment file. To get the key, just follow the instructions on this website. I also have a video on how to get your key in uh, under one minute. So I'll link that in the description if you want to watch that instead. We'll pass the key to Gemini. And then down here, we'll instantiate the model by calling genai.generativeModel and then passing it the model code. We can find the model code by following this link. I'll scroll down to right here, expand this. You can see the model code here. If you want to switch, just grab the model code from the other ones. Okay, Gemini is ready to go. Next, I'll create the ChromaDB factor database by calling ChromaDB.PersistentClient and passing it this path. The first time I run it, it's going to create this folder on the left side here, and you'll find the database inside this folder. After creation, if I run the same code again, it will just load from this folder. So don't worry about running this multiple times. Next, we need an embedding function. The embedding function converts text into embeddings, which are just a bunch of numbers. Embeddings is how vector databases understands the meaning behind the text. And we are going to use Gemini to perform the embedding. Now that we have the database, we need to create a collection to hold the notes. You can think of a collection like a regular database table. I'm calling the collection YouTube notes. I'm also passing in the embedding function that we just declare up here. That way, whenever we interact with the collection, it knows to make use of the Gemini embedding function. The first time I call this code, it's going to create the collection. Subsequent calls is going to retrieve the collection. I realize I haven't run the cells, so let me go back up here, do the imports. set up the resources. Now that we're all set up, we are ready to generate notes. Let's go down here. I have a couple of videos here. Let's check out what the first one is. I've been thinking of buying a car and uh, I never buy a used car before. So I'm checking out this video to get an, an idea of what it's like. And I already watched it. I thought it was great. You can see that it's almost 17 minutes. So uh, I definitely need some notes. I'm not going to remember everything that was said in the video. So let's hop back to the code. Okay, so I grabbed the uh, video ID from here and I'm just making it into a variable. So this is my input section. This is really the only section that you need to modify. Also, here's the prompt that I'm going to send into the uh, Gemini model. And I wanted to extract the notes from my transcript. 
Now you probably don't need to change this, but uh, if you swap out for a different large language model, you might need to adjust this for better results. With this video ID, I'm going to use the YouTube transcript API and I get the transcript of the ID. Uh, I'm going to pass in the uh, English language. For more reference, you can come over here. This has a pretty straightforward uh, interface. So after extracting the transcript, I'm going to use the text formatter, which is part of this library. Use it to format the transcript, basically formatting it into plain text. After extracting the transcript from the video, I'm going to write it into a temporary text file so that I can review it. It could be pretty long, so that's why I'm writing it to a file. Okay, let me run. Let me run this first. Before I run this, remember up here when we ran the uh, chromadb.persistent client code, it created a folder here. And here's the uh, database. ChromaDB is using a SQLite database. Coming back down, let's extract the transcript. We should see a temp transcript file right here. Okay, the transcript looks okay. We don't really need to check it. Now with the transcript, I'm going to pass it to Gemini. With the prompt, remember the prompt, extract notes from transcript plus the transcript and by calling generate content, it should generate the notes for me. Here I'm passing in stream equal to false. If stream equal to true, um, you might notice that if you ask ChatGPT something, it responds line by line. That's what streaming is. And we don't need that. We want the whole response. Once it's completed, send the whole response back. Once I get my notes back, I'm just writing it into another temp text file. The notes is going to be contained in response.txt. Let's run this. Okay, here it is. Cool, a whole 17 minute video summarized to 30 lines. Now make sure to double check the notes, make edits if necessary. Keep in mind that transcripts are pretty ugly. There's no punctuations, there could be typos, so don't expect 100% accuracy. Okay, let's assume I uh, fixed up the notes and I came back to my code here. Now I want to save my notes. Here I'm just opening back up my temporary notes and I read it into the notes variable. With my ChromaDB collection, I'm calling the upsert function, which inserts if the record doesn't exist or update it if it does exist. Let's go here. Uh, I think the reference is pretty straightforward. So instead of calling add, I'm calling upsert right here. I'm passing in my notes right here. ChromaDB expect us to pass in an ID, or make up our own ID for this record that we're about to insert. Since YouTube video IDs are unique, I'm just gonna use that as my ID. And the reason why we're passing these in as arrays is because uh, this upsert function allows you to insert multiple records at the same time. So you can actually list out multiple things if you want to insert it all at once. We're just inserting one, so this is okay. And down here, all I'm doing is using the get function, giving it the ID, make sure it gets this record back. This is just to double check. Now let's run it. Let's check out this record. Okay, we got our ID right here. We can see the embedding. We didn't insert any metadata. The original text goes into the documents node. Okay, so ChromaDB took the text and converted into this embedding. Usually looking at the embeddings, it's not meaningful to humans. So over here in the include statement, you can take this out. Since we don't have metadata either, you can take it out. I can call it again. The second time it's going to do an update. Since we didn't change anything, it's fine. Call it again. And this is an easy way to uh, look at the record. You can see that it didn't bring back the embedding or the metadata uh, once we took it out of the include. All right, so our note is saved. I'm gonna come back up here. 
I have a couple of other videos. Uh, let me just insert those offline and I'll be back in just one second. Okay, I added those records to the database. I can actually check out the records in the database. Um, but first, in the extension, you should have SQLite Viewer installed. And then you can actually open the uh, SQLite database. And I think it's embeddings, embedding metadata. You can see that I inserted five sets of notes. So this is just a quick way to see what's in the database. Now back to our code. I want to be able to search my notes. So I'm down at the search notes section. I did have a video on cooking beef whips. Check this out, looks pretty good, huh? Now I want to know how much beef do I need to buy to make this beef whips recipe. This is what I want to query, comma db. And result specifies how many results I want to get back. I'm just going to leave it at five. And then I'm going to call comma db.query, pass it my query text, how much beef do I need, and then what to return. You already saw this include statement back uh, up above. And you can send in multiple queries at once and Quamba DB will return you results for multiple queries. All I'm doing is looping through the results and uh, printing them out. Once you see the results object, it should be pretty uh, straightforward What's uh, how I'm looping through this. Now, when I run this code, it's going to give me the full notes on the video that talks about the beef recipe. Down here is where I asked Gemini to look at the notes and answer this question for me. So the prompt that I'm constructing is answer the following question using the document as context. The question that I have is how much beef do I need? And then the document, the document is the first result. I'm passing in the first result that is returned by Chroma DB. Using this input, Gemini should be able to answer the question for me. So first, let's get the notes. Here's my results. Let me click on open in the text editor. Makes it easier to look at. Here's my first result and the first link. And uh, this is my recipe. Look at how nicely it's laid out here. Preparation steps and uh, the ingredients that I need, any cooking instructions. I also have a video on how to cook steak. So a steak is beef, so being the second result, that's good. My query was for beef whips, so it knows that regular steak is not beef whips, but it's still closely related. And now, Result number three talks about lower back pain exercises. This is not completely not relevant to recipes, but this is how factor databases work. When I ask for five results, it will give me the top five results, whether or not all five are relevant or not. So somehow back pain is, uh, let's see what number four is first. Four is about buying cars. I don't know, my back pain is a little bit closer to beef than uh, buying a car. Just note that not all the results that comes back are relevant. Okay, going back here. Now with my first result, I'm going to pass it to uh, Gemini and uh, see if it can answer my question of uh, how much beef do I need for this recipe. The recipe requires one kilogram. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is how I'm extracting uh, notes from videos and saving it for future use. So definitely maybe having a user interface, an actual web interface is better than uh, messing around with a Jupyter notebook. So that might be something I'll work on in the future. Let me know what other improvements I can add to this. Uh, I love to hear from you. All right, that's it for now. See you in the next video.